Hello and welcome back to the guide for the mystical agriculture mod for Minecraft 1.16. Today we'll be going over everything the mod has to offer. But before we get started, one thing to note about this is that it is a companion mod that is compatible with many others. And it is also a semi-popular one for different mod packs, meaning that some recipes may differ from this guide into other mod packs, and they might even differ from mod pack to mod pack. So I will not be going over every individual recipe, but I will go over the basic recipes for a lot of the different items. But make sure you check your specific mod pack for those recipes, but the processes for everything is the same. So without further ado, we're just going to hop right into it. To start off the mod, you need Infernium. Now, to get this, there are a few different ways. The first way we will show you is if we come over to a cave here, you can find Infernium Ore. When you mine this, this will give you a few Infernium. You can also find Nether Infernium Ore and End Infernium Ore. Overworld Ore will give you a max of 4, Nether Ore will give you roughly a max of 6, and End Ore will give you roughly a max of 8 Infernium Essence. And you can increase this by adding Fortune to your pickaxe. Now if you're going through the world and you aren't able to find it, there's a second way you can get it. And that involves our good pillager friends right here. Because not only do pillagers drop it, but as well as other mobs. Now let's uh, let's start getting rid of these uh, unruly neighbors, I guess you could say. And let's see what we get. Now the sword I'm using, oh look, there it is. We got three of them and we got one Fernium. Now, as you saw, I killed three pillagers and got one Fernium. They don't drop like once every single time, they are slightly rare. As I say, as I just got a second. And you can see I didn't get a third. Nothing from you. Infernium drops from any living creature. So, oh, there's a third. Can we get a fourth? Nope. So, you get it from hostile mobs, but you can also get them from passive mobs. So, if you're searching for it and you're not having luck underground, you can you'll most likely find it just defending your base or searching out in the world at night. Now that you have Inferium, you can now make Inferium seeds. To craft these, you need eight Inferium and one seed. And this will give you one Inferium seed. These operate just like any other seed. So if I take them off our wall here, come down to our liver, little riverside garden, and I can just plant them. Now, since these are pretty good resource to have i recommend making a lot of them also because they grow really slow there are ways to speed it up as we will go over later and there are also ways to automate this which again i will go over later but just keep in mind that i recommend starting this mod early so later down the line when you start needing a lot of resources you can have a lot of these, or you can just automate it and have a very big backlog. Another ore you need to know is this. This is prosperity ore, which will give you prosperity shards. These can only be found mining, but like Infernium, they can be found in the overworld, nether, and the end. And you'll get multiple per each ore. Now, these shards are mostly used to make the base materials that you need crafting later down the line, such as prosperity ingots and prosperity gems. But I'll go over those specifically later in this guide. Infernium is the lowest of five tiers of essence. To upgrade it, you need an infusion crystal. Now to craft it, you need four prosperity shards, four infernium essence, and a diamond. And this will give you your infusion crystal. Now a thing to note is the infusion crystal does have durability. And every time you make a new essence, it will use up the durability as you would expect. This is just something to note so you don't use it and then lose it. Mod packs can change the durability of the infusion crystal. So keep that in mind, some mod packs keep it at its normal durability of about 1024 upgrades of 1024 uses, but some mod packs might make it shorter. Some for the fun of it might even make it longer. They can also change this crafting recipe to make the crystal itself. 
Again, keep all this in mind when you're playing, but I'm just going to go over what it does. To craft the next tier of essence, you need four of the previous tier and the crystal. So for instance, you would need four infernium dust to make one prudentium dust, four prudentium to make one tertinium, four tertinium to make one imperium, and four imperium to make one supremium. What you also can do is turn them back to the previous tiers without the need of the crystal. So you can turn one supremium into four imperium and go back down the line till you get all the way down to inferium. Now to keep it in note of how many you need, to make one prudentium, you need four inferium. Make one tertium, you need 16 inferium. One imperium is 64 inferium. And one supremium is 256 inferium. So keep in mind when you're making or having crafting recipes later down the line, to do a lot of the high tier stuff, you need a lot of this. And one way I recommended is automating inferium production with your plants. And I will go over that again later in this guide. Or if you want to check it out, check the description down below for the timestamps. There are different base crafting materials you need in order to advance in the mod. Like I said earlier, you need prosperity ingots. To craft those, you need one iron ingot and four prosperity shards. Now, again, these are base ingots, which you can then apply essence to, to make it ingots of that tier. Now, if we come around, you can see I have our prosperity ingot and two imperium essence. This is the fourth tier to make an imperium ingot. I don't need to make an inferium ingot, then a potentium ingot, and then work its way up. Not anymore. For the ingots and the gems, all you need is the prosperity base and two of the essence you want to make the ingot or gem of. Now, if we go around, you have your four prosperity shards, a diamond to make the gem, and just like I said before, two of the essence, and then you have the gem. Now we have gone over the infusion crystal, but that does have limited uses. And sometimes it's kind of expensive to have to recraft it every single time. So you can make the master infusion crystal, which does the same thing, but has no durability, so you can use it forever. Now to craft this, you need four supremium essence, a supremium gem, and four prosperity shards. And like I said, you take it out and well, you use it like the other one, except it has no durability. Now I've mentioned that you can grow resources using seeds and I haven't really shown you how to do that. Well, this is where we get to it. To get the seeds, you first need an infusion altar. To craft this, you need four stone, three red carpets and two gold ingots. Now when you take it and if you place it down, you can see this little, these little ghostly pedestals. Well, you need these pedestals. And to craft them, you need two stone, a gold ingot, and two red carpets. And you need eight of these. Now, if we come over to our already set up altar, you can see they'll look like this. You don't need a big area, but you do need an area to do this. And the way these works is you take the essence you want and the material you want for seeds. In this case, I'll show you with iron. All seeds will have a very similar crafting recipe. So if you want any types of ingots or any basic resources, this is how you would do it. So first thing you place the iron ingots in the area around it, and then you place your essence. Now the order or the exact placement doesn't necessarily matter. I could place the iron in these corners and the essence in the other ones. In most cases, it doesn't matter. I've done it both ways and it's worked. But just try to space them out one apart because I have run into issues in some mod packs that if I place like four iron here, the four essence over there, it doesn't necessarily work. So just keep that in mind. Now I need to put these essence onto something and that's where prosperity seeds come in. Four prosperity shards, seeds. Give you these you place the seeds in the center and well nothing's happening this is because it requires a redstone signal the favorite way i like doing it is well a button on the ground you power it you wait a moment and bob your uncle you have iron seeds like i said majority of ingots and other resources this is how you do it place down put it in 
and you can see we have iron seeds here. They don't look necessarily different, but when they grow up, the tip of the flower will be different color depending on what it is. Now, if I want to make gold seeds, diamond seeds, platinum seeds, copper seeds, bronze seeds, all of the ingots will have the same crafting recipe. The only difference is the ingots you use as well as what type of essence you use. So keep that in mind when you're doing it. Make sure you check any eye or whatever overlay or HUD mod you have that gives you crafting recipes. Any mod pack can change these and it's important that you know what they are before in your specific mod pack so you don't get deep into it and then realize, oh wait, I've been doing it wrong. Well, let's add one infernium quicker and I want my iron seed to go quicker as well. If I really want to, I can just use bone meal. And... Well... If you're wondering what's going on, it's a whole lot of nothing to be completely honest. Bone meal doesn't work on these seeds. For that, you need mystical fertilizer, which can be crafted with bone meal. So to craft mystical fertilizer, you need four bone meal, four inferium essence, and a diamond. And this will give you four infernium fertilizer. Well, there's also a second crafting recipe for this. And that involves using four fertilizer essence which is a 10% drop chance every time you harvest a mystical flower, as well as Infernium Essence and a Diamond, and this will give you eight. Now, if we go over to our flowers and we right click, you can see, bam, bam, bam. They instantly grow flowers. It's not like bone meal takes two or three charges. You just get the full flower. Now, as you can see, we are currently in the nether. The reason why we have to go to the nether is because we want to make mob seeds. So if you want to grow creeper essence, cow essence, enderman essence to get gunpowder, leather, or ender pearls on demand, you got to go to the nether. Because if we can see down here, we have this brown stone and along with this brown and like tan ore. This is soulstone and solium ore. What they do is, well, you need them for the crafting recipe. Because solium, you have to make solium base seeds in order to make mob seeds. But also, they can make solium ingots in order to make other things you'll need. The way you get solium essence is you get the ore and you chuck it in a furnace. Now, I have played mod packs where you pick up the ore, you have chuck in furnace, or when you break the ore, you get essence. But just keep in mind when you're doing it, along with this ore, and as well as the stone spawn in any biome. Such as you can see, I'm in one of the crimson forest biomes right now, and we have the solium and soulstone. If we explore a little bit more, See if we can find another quick patch. No, we can't find another quick patch. So I'm not gonna waste too much time. Oh, there we go. Another soul stone, more solium. Right by our portal. One thing to note is that some mod packs, modded biomes, might interfere with the spawn of soul stone and solium. So keep that in mind. If you're having a hard time finding it, there might be a conflict with the soul, well, Mr. Agriculture and the other mod for their specific biomes. I recommend looking for basic Minecraft biomes, or I know it also works with biome o plenty biomes. Now, what exactly do you craft with soulstone and solium? Well, the first thing you need is solium based seeds. And the way you get this, you need solium dust and prosperity seeds. Just like this. And these base seeds are the, well, base for all mob seeds. Now, what exactly do you put in for mob seeds? Well, you need the mob's essence. And to get the essence, it's a few step process. 
First thing first, you need a solium ingot, which again, two solium and a prosperity ingot. The other thing you need is soul glass. And you need this soul dust. Now this is different than solium dust. To get soul dust, you have to smelt the soul stone from cobblestone to normal stone to smooth stone, then to the dust. So it's a four step process. If we quickly go in, I will show you exactly what I mean. Soul stone, smooth soul stone, soul stone, soul cobblestone. It is a multi-step process and it's kind of tedious, but it is needed. And to get the soul glass, you need four soul dust and a glass. Now you need this. This is the solium dagger. This is the most important part because you have to kill mobs with this weapon in order to get their essence. And for this, you need two solium ingots, a gold sword, and two solium dust. You kill mobs, but you have to collect their essence. That is, we come over here for the soul jar, which is three soul glass and a solium ingot. Now, how much essence you need depends on what mob it is. Some passive mobs, you might need less. Some hostile mobs, you might need more. Now, the important part is in order to fill up the soul jar with the essence, you need the final hit to be with your solium dagger. So if you take your diamond sword, whack them down to one heart, or even half a heart, and then go wha-bam with your dagger, you got the essence. Now, the solium dagger does seven points of damage. So if we can quickly look around, see if we can find a squid or a sheep. So you see our soul jar. We'll take our solium dagger, take a few hits, and now we have one of eight sheep essence in our soul jar. So if we go around, kill eight sheep, we will have a full jar. For seeds though, you need four full jars. And don't worry if they're not in your hot bar, as long as you have them in your inventory, the next one will be filled. So for this instance, I decided to go with creeper essence. So if I look at my four soul jars, I have all of them full of creeper essence. And I have my tertium essence as well as my solium base seeds. So if we just go and toss everything we need in, we will press our activation button. And as it processes, we have our creeper seeds. Now if we go back over to our little garden, get rid of you, place you down, take our fertilizer, and bam, we now have our creeper seeds. Now as I've showed, the mystical flowers aren't the fastest at growing, but you can speed them up with these growth accelerators. To craft the growth accelerator, you need four stone, four essence of the desired tier you want, and one gem the desired tier you want. In this case, I went Imperium. Now each growth accelerator recipe will give you three of them per. And the thing to note is that if we take it and then we inspect it, you can see grows the plant above it faster range 48 blocks. What that means is that is its vertical range, not horizontal. So one growth accelerator would be needed for one plot of farmland. Now, if we come up here, to the top of this pillar drop post, we have some flowers. And I planted these at the beginning of my recording session. And I kind of hoped I probably wouldn't be recording as long as I thought, which at this point, it was probably been about an hour. Oop. So that one just grew. And in these ones, I have growth accelerators below, and these two, I don't. So in about an hour, all of these grew, that one just did in front of our eyes. I got three here, go down a floor, I got three there, and none on the first floor. So from the growth accelerator 40 blo 48 blocks up, it will grow plants. Now. What I mean by 48 blocks, it's 48 blocks to the plant itself, this little highlighted area, as you can see. Not the farmland, it's the plant itself. That's a mistake I made before, 
all of you to know in case some of you like me were thinking, oh yeah, it's just to hear and get your math wrong. You can also improve your furnaces with essence dust. Now, to get the base tier of Inferium, you need one furnace, two Inferium ingots, a block of Inferium essence, and then one Inferium essence. And to give you your basic furnace. Now, you can upgrade this to each tier above this. You basically copy this recipe with whatever tier you want, except for one important fact. Unlike the gems or the ingots, you need the previous tier in order to upgrade. So to upgrade to the next one of Prudentium, you need the Inferium. For Tertium, you need Prudentium. Imperium, you need the previous. And Supremium, you need the previous. So it's a step. So this one is a stepping stone. As you go from basic to higher to higher to higher. And it's again, the same recipe. One essence, one block and two ingots with whatever the previous tier furnace is in it. You can craft some machines in mystical agriculture. And for this, you need a machine frame. Now to craft this, you need four redstone, four iron, and a stone. And this will give you one machine frame. One of these machines is the seed reprocessor. Now to craft this, you need your machine frame, four iron ingots, two iron hose, and two solium ingots. And to give you your base tier seed reprocessor. If we go into the interface, you have an area for power. Majority of the time is you just put coal in it. Personally, I've tried hooking up power to it and it doesn't seem to work, but some mod packs might change that. So test it on your own, but if it doesn't, just chuck coal, lava bucket, whatever you want in there and it will generate power. What you then do is you place a seeds in this left area and then it will turn them into their essence. So if we check here, one seed will give you two essence of a type. When you harvest seeds, there is a small chance that you can get new seeds back. So if you have a plot and they're full up and you don't have more room, just turn the seeds into essence. Now, this isn't necessarily the fastest if you have a lot of them, and it does use some, well, power to do it. You can actually upgrade this just like the furnace. So by placing the seed reprocessor in the center, two inferium ingots, a block of inferium, and an inferium dust at the top, this would give you the inferium seed reprocessor. It will now operate faster. It will now hold more power. So if we go in, it goes from 80 to 120,000 FE, and it's just better. And just like the furnace, if you want the next step up, same crafting recipe, just with the next tier materials. You can upgrade your diamond tools, weapons, and armor to essence armors, tools, and weapons. Now to craft them, all of them will be the same. You need to get the inferior version. You need the diamond tier, two gems, and two ingots. And just like the furnace and seed reprocessors, each tier you need the previous to craft. So it's again, will be inferium, prudentium ingots, prudentium gems to get the prudentium, all the way up to supremium. Each time you go up, armor wise, they'll have increased defense, armor toughness, dur and durability we go around to weapons the swords will do more damage have increased durability tools will be quicker increased durability the other thing to note is that when you get to the supremium tier of armor weapons and tools they have no durability and they will last you forever they also do well the most damage the most protection and they mine the qu quickest another tool you can make to help grow plants is a watering can. To craft this, you need four iron, a bowl, and a bone meal. Now, if we take it and then we right click, well, nothing happens. If we look at it in our inventory, it's well empty. So let's go over to any water source, right click, and now it is filled. You don't have to refill it, there's no durability, but it is well nice to have. So if we get rid of you, place a new one down, and then we'll water it. You can see that it waters a three by three area. Now, as you can see, well, nothing's happening. This is because the base watering can only really works for normal seeds. So wheat, potatoes, 
carrots, or if you have Pam's Harvest Craft, some of those. To work for these, you need to upgrade it. You need four Inferium ingots, four Mystical Fertilizer, and, well, a Warden Can. And this will give you the Inferium version. To upgrade it, like I said, same thing with everything else. Get the next tier of ingots along with the watering can. And boom, next tier. All the way up to Supremium, which the Supremium watering can goes in a range of 11 by 11. So every time you upgrade it, it increases the range by two. The only difference between the main watering can and the inferior watering can is, well, they both do a three by three area, but the inferior watering can does work on mystical agriculture plants, such as if I come over here, fill it up first, and water it, again, it's still going to take a while. It's not like immediate bone meal, but you can see it grew there. If we wait a little bit longer, we'll see it grow again. The armor, tools, weapons, they're all nice because they are, well, better than diamond, but they can also be even better better and to do that you need to make augments and place them in with a tinkering table to craft a tinkering table you need seven stone and two solium dust now when you right click the interface for the tinkering table you can see well all of these locks now if i place my supremium sword inside you can see one of them gets removed and we'll go over, let's take a nice tier 5 upgrade. Oh look, attack AoE. You know, let's do something we can see, which is strength 3. Currently, it does 24 damage. Strength 3 brings it up to 44 damage. And again, it keeps the enchantment, so it keeps looting. And now I do 44 points damage. Sorry, Sheepy. Yeah, you stood no chance. Now, how do you craft these augments? The augments, specifically the unattuned augment, which is the base, is one of the crafting recipes I have seen change the most. In base Britannia, it is six prosperity shards and three iron ingots to get one of these. And then you can then put these within an infusion altar to get a specific one. So if we take it off and then we check out the crafting recipes, you can see some ones. Such as if you want flight, you need four supremium and four nether stars. Now this is the other thing to note, that all of these have tiers, such as flight is a tier five. Health boost one is a tier one, attack AOE one is a tier three. This is important because this decides what armor you can put your stuff on. There are five tiers of essence, so to place stuff on them, to place augments on them, you need the correct tier. The easy way to tell this is whatever essence you use to craft it. If you use Inferium Essence to craft it, you can put on Inferium Armor and above. So Health Boost 1 can go on your Inferium Chest Plate, along with Prudentium Chest Plate, the Tertium Chest Plate, Imperium, and Supremium. And they just go up from there. But the Mining Fatigue Resistance Augment involves Imperium Essence. So you can only put it on the Imperium chest plate or Imperium armor and Supremium armor. You can't put it on anything lower. Some of these also have upgrades. So we will take the health boost one and you can use it to make health boost two, three, four, five. And again, this can all be placed on the whatever armor you need for the tier. The same goes with weapons such as we saw be put on strength three this is a tier five so you can only be put on supremium swords tier four imperium tier three involves tertium so again keep that in mind when you're crafting these they can change depending on what mod pack you're playing but the one thing that doesn't change is that whatever essence you use to craft it is the minimum required tier you can put these on there are different ways you can automate the production of essence but one thing you need is special farmland equal to the tier of seed you put into it. And well, to make this farmland is pretty simple. You need dirt, the essence you want to make the tier of, and a hoe. And this will make the farmland. Or if you already have the farmland in a block, as you can see here, 
all you need is that and the essence and it'll make it the same. And I've used Inferium for this example because I'll show you how to grow Inferium seeds to make more Inferium. Now, these are three ways I've done it before. There are plenty of others. These are just ways I have done it. The first one is with botany pots. This one's a hopper one. So every time the plant is fully grown, it automatically harvests it and place it in the chest underneath. Next one is garden cloches with immersive engineering. I've used these before. I actually have a whole bank of ways to use them in here with a bunch of different crops. All you need is water going into it and power as well. And again, when you go into it, Inferium farmland for Inferium seeds and will get you the Inferium essence. One thing you can also do is you can place mystical fertilizer in this slot here and it will grow them faster. There is a slight compatibility issue I found in other mods. There is a slight compatibility issue I found in other mod packs so keep that in mind when you are using it. Sometimes it grows it quicker, sometimes it doesn't really, it's very weird, depends. Compatibility issues are solved on the back end. Next one is the photogenic insulator. This is one I've used a few times. Personally, I'm not the biggest fan of it, to be completely honest. This is because as you can see, every time it completes it, it places the seeds in the export. So you have to take them out and then put them back in, or you just have to use pipes to kind of circle it around. I'm personally not the biggest fan of this system, but again, on large complicated systems, you can probably set up a few of these and not have any issues. The other way is with the create mod, you can create farms. This is a test one I made a while back. You can automate them like these. There's probably a ton of other mods you can use to automate and you could probably automate it as well using just normal stuff you can find in base Minecraft. This is just to show you that there is a few ways to automate it in mod packs. Because like I've said earlier, this is more of a companion mod. So this kind of mostly will be found in mod packs. And I've chose three mods that I've used before and also a number of them that are also in more mod packs. Now you have all you need to continue your journey with mystical agriculture. That is all I have for you today. If you enjoyed this guide, please leave a like on the video and subscribe for more Minecraft guides and the occasional other video or stream. But again, thank you all for watching and I hope you have a good day. Bye.